Once a month or so, I get myself together and I make a video called Top 5 Apps of the Month. And basically what this is, is just a list of five really cool applications that I want to share with you guys. So that's what this video is. This is August 2024's version of Top 5 Apps of the Month. And of course, these are all Linux applications. So let's go ahead and jump in. But before we do, if you like this type of video, make sure you leave a thumbs up. It really helped the channel. Also, if you have suggestions for applications for future lists, leave those in the comment section below. I just might take you up on the offer. So let's go ahead and jump in. The first app on the list is an application called CPU X. Now, this is a very, or at least a fairly simple application. And basically what this does is it gives you a ton of, of awesome information about your computer obviously and it gives you information about the cpu the gpu your memory your motherboard it will provide benchmark testing if you want it to basically this gives you all the technical nerdy details you could possibly want about your system including load and what your computer is doing in terms of uh, temperature and stuff like that now it's not a process monitor so you're not going to get like what processes are running so you'll have to get something like HTOP or BTOP in order to do that. But this is more of a tool that will give you hardcore information about your hardware in case something either is either going wrong or you're just looking for that type of information. So uh, there's not much more that I can say about this other than this looks very familiar to an application that also runs on Windows. It may be the exact same application. I'm not sure. But this one here runs on Linux, gives you a ton of information about your CPU, your GPU, your memory, and stuff like that. In the B-roll, you'll see that, first off, my BIOS is really, really old. I didn't even realize that it was really, really old, although I don't know why I didn't think of that, because it's probably never had an update. So that's something that I'm going to have to take care of. Also, you'll notice that my memory, it says unknown. <laughs> now, I knew that I had cheap Chinese men memory uh, in my computer. I'm a cheapskate. What can I say? Uh, but I, I'd much rather buy a new keyboard than a uh, brand name memory. Let's just put it that way. So I, I knew going in that this was not very good memory, but it's nice to know that it's unknown origin. Uh, so anyways, that's CPU X. If you need some information about your computer in terms of your hardware, this application could definitely help you out. So the next one on the list is called Crosswords. Now, Crosswords is simply an application that does crosswords. Now, in the B-roll that you're seeing now, you'll notice that I'm really, really bad at crosswords, or at least you'll see that eventually. Uh, but this application, for those of you who are good at crosswords, or at least you like to do crosswords, is pretty awesome because it comes with several sources of crosswords pre-installed, and then you can go add several others from a pre-configured list, and a lot of them will auto-download from those sources. So things like the Los Angeles Time, the Atlantic, the New Yorker, things like that, you can get their crosswords downloaded to this application, however frequently those things are released. Now, the one source that is not here is the New York Times, so if you're into the New York Times crossword, you're pretty much out of luck, at least in terms of this application. But as long as you're not tied to the source, you there are probably two dozen different sources that you can choose from depending on what you're looking for. And you can then do those crosswords. A lot of them auto download, which is really nice. And the controls are fairly simple. You just tab between words and press enter when you're done with it. And it tells you whether or not you get it wrong. There's also a hinting mechanism. So it will not give you a hint of the word, but it'll give you several words that could possibly fit, which is interesting. So that's a neat way to do the hints without, you know, feel like, like feeling like it's cheating. So that's really nice as well. Now, as you can see again in the B roll, I'm extraordinarily bad at crosswords. I always have been. The moment I, I, I consider myself fairly intelligent, you know, I like I have an advanced degree. I went to high school and got a certificate for graduation and I went to a, you know, a really good university. But I, the moment a crossword opens up, I lose all of my vocabulary. Like it's all gone. Like I have no words whatsoever. It's really, really bad. So I, I, I've tried them many times in the past, but I'm just not any good at them. So this app is probably not for me, but if you're into crosswords and you want to do them on your computer or whatever, uh, this might help you out. So that's crosswords. The next one on the list is it's an application that is kind of like a dime a dozen because there are several out there that do similar things. This is called disk analyzer and it basically does what it says on the tin. It's a disk analyzer. It will analyze your disks that are attached to your computer and basically tell you what's taking up the most space. It's a graphical front end basically for DU and it will 
show you a really pretty graph of all the stuff that's on your computer and you can tell by the size of the color charts of what's taking up space you can then right click on those things and move them to trash if you want to I would always caution that you don't want to delete something that you don't know what it is so if something's taking up space and you don't know what it is leave it alone because chances are you'll regret it if you delete it but the good thing about this application is that it won't delete anything like it doesn't have at least as far as I know it does not have the power to delete anything instead it will just move it to the trash so if you do accidentally delete something you can go through and just move it back to where it you know belongs uh, but just keep that in mind with anything like, uh, like this that if you accidentally move something and it gets deleted you know you might be out data so make sure you know what the hell you're doing so that's uh, disk analyzer there's not much to say about this chances are you've seen applications that do stuff like this this one here just happens to be a GTK ver version of that type of application it's very well designed very simple but does its job really really well so that's disk analyzer the next one on the list is a fun one this is my favorite of the month because the best memory I have of Windows ever is Space Cadet Pinball. Now this is an application or a, a game that came originally I believe on Windows XP. It might have been a version before that, I don't know. I, I didn't have those earlier versions uh, be between 98 and XP. Uh, so I don't know if it was there beforehand, but for sure it was Windows XP. And uh, this was the best part about Windows XP. You'd sit there for hours just playing pinball. It had awesome sounds, which you're hearing now, if I can tone them down just a little bit so they don't tune me out. But the, it's, you know, has awesome sounds, has you know, nice graphics, and you just sit there and you, you mess around with your mouse buttons left and right, toggle the, the hitters. Um, you can tell that my uh, pinball jargon is way below where it needs to be. Uh, it, it's been 20 years, people. I, it's been a while since I've played pinball. But anyways, this is, this is a, as far as I can tell, an exact replica of that game. And uh, I played it for, I don't know, just 20 minutes of B-roll. And I'm not going to put all of that here. I'll probably just put the beginning or whatever. But I have like 20 minutes of B-roll of me playing this game. I'm actually pretty good at it. Once I got kind of warmed up, I was pretty good. Now, am I like world record holding? No, but uh, it was fun. I had a, a ton of fun. This is definitely one that I'm keeping installed because... You know, every once in a while I just have some time, I need to, you know, waste some time or whatever, and this would be a good way to do so. So if you are either old enough to remember Windows XP and you enjoyed this game, you might like this for nostalgic reasons, but if you're newer to the computing space, uh, which a lot of my audience is, uh, this is something that came out in the, you know, early 2000s or whatever, and a lot of us had a lot of fun. It's nice that everyone can still experience it as well without having to dig up an old copy of Windows XP, which is not something that I'd, you know, push off onto anyone. So that's Space Cadet Pinball. The last one on the list is a to-do application. Now, a to <laughs> there are tons of to-do applications out there, like literal tons. Like chances are, if you are learning how to code or if you're learning how to program, one of the first applications you'll ever do is a to-do application. It's just kind of one of those things you kind of cut your teeth on. And uh, that's true for a lot of people, right? But this one here is actually really well done. Now, it doesn't have all the features that I personally want in a to-do application. It has some... It at least has one really weird quirk, which I'll talk about here in a minute. But basically, errands, which is what the application is called, I don't remember if I've actually already said that or not, is a GTK-based to-do application. You just add tasks that you normally do. You can mark them done as you want. You can set a start date if you have a task that's going to take up a, a certain amount of time. You can also set a due date. Uh, I didn't notice a place where you can do recurring, but I'm assuming that you probably can uh, and another thing that's really nice about this is that you can set up nextcloud synchronization so if you have nextcloud you can synchronize this with nextcloud and then transfer that to another application that also supports nextcloud which is really nice that means you don't have to sign up for any weird syncing services or you don't have to do weird things like syncing a to-do.txt type file or whatever so there's that also you can go through and assign tags, you can assign uh, priorities, and all the stuff that you'd expect to be able to do inside of a to-do application, you can do here. Now, the, that one quirk that I mentioned that really kind of just stood out in the few minutes that I used this was that you cannot, at least as far as I can tell, create a tag while creating a task. 
you have to go to the tag section, create the tag, then go create the task, and then you can use the tag. That's not great UI, okay? That, that requires way too many steps to organize your tasks. You should be able to create the tags right there while you're creating tests. Now, it's possible that you can do that. Like, I, I have, I'll admit I haven't used this all that much. I just used it for a few minutes to kind of test what it's all about and, and then just wanted to share it with you guys. But just that's one thing that kind of stood out as far as I can tell, you can't do that. But the syncing possibilities of this are really nice and the UI is great. It has most of the features that you that I would want. There's a couple like natural language of, you know, selecting for due dates, like to do as tasks. I said that really weird, but basically if you say uh, do this task today, it would set it as a task that is due today. That's what Todoist will do. This doesn't seem to do that, but that's not uh, an, uh, something that a lot of applications actually do. So I'm not surprised that it's missing here. But other than that, it's really well designed. It has the main features that you'd want and it has that awesome syncing functionality. So if you're looking for a well-designed to-do application, errands might just be that for you. So those are the top five apps for August 2024. Now, like I said, if you have applications that you'd like to suggest for future lists in this section in this series, you can leave those in the comment section below. Also, if you have comments on any of the applications that I mentioned today, again, in the comment section below, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, again, leave a thumbs up if you like this type of series. I'd really appreciate that. It really helped the channel. So thank you so much for watching. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all of these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very, very much for your support. I truly, honestly do appreciate it. Again, if you want to support me just like all those people, patreon.com slash linuxcast, or you can head on over to the store, which is available at shop that the linuxcast.org. There you'll find all sorts of awesome merch and you can get something in return for supporting me financially, which helps me make more Linux content for you guys. So thank you so very much for watching. I'll see you next time.